Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delbert again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for all of you who joined the channel recently. I really appreciate your time and I'm pretty excited because the channel has been doing really great. I've been doing a lot of videos about visual effects. I've been doing videos about Magic Leap and I'm going to continue on with visual effects today and show you some of the things that I've been learning for the last couple of days and those have been how to add parameters, how to expose some of the parameters through the visual effects graph and how we can actually constrain the ranges between those parameters and how we can connect and bind some of the game objects that we see in the scene with the visual effects graph. So let's go into Unity and jump in and work on it. All right guys, so let me show you the scene that I have right now. If I click on Portal, you can see that in the scene view, I have the particle system, which is the VFX system. And I also have a sphere that is centered in the middle. So what I did is I just created a, a game object, which was uh, a sphere 3D, and then place it inside of the portal, and I call it directional. So there's really nothing special about it. It's just a sphere with a sphere collider. It doesn't really need to have a collider. It just by default added that. And I also have a directional material, and this is just a basic material. And because we're using the HD render pipeline, it assigns that shader by default. So it doesn't really have anything special. It's just basically a sphere with a material and then just the prettify components in it. So that's what I want to I want to show you is how we can actually control by moving this from, you know, from the back and moving it up and moving it down, how we can actually change the way that the particles are reacting to the position of the sphere. The other thing that I want to do is I also want to add a component that we can basically tweak so we can tweak a property and we can change the size just pretty much how we change the size here if I go in and let's say that I select the portal and I change the size of the particle so if I go down and up and a lot of times this won't work and I find it by closing the particle system and reopening the particle system by clicking on the game object and clicking on edit it, it's kind of like it actually rebinds to everything. So if you have issues like just the one that I did, just do that, just reopen the particle system and then things will just start to work. Let me just align it here and place everything how I had it. Perfect, and make sure that I, I select the portal. So let me, let's me let make sure that I can now make the changes to the size so that you can see. So yeah, so I'm gonna add a new property that is gonna allow us to change the size of the particle. So I'm gonna leave it at 0.26 by default. And, and the other thing that I'm gonna add is I want to add is one that is gonna allow us to animate the major radius. So I wanted to go down to something like 2.85 and then, and then go back on. So to do that, let me show you really quick how we can do that. So you can add something that it's called per periodic. I can't even say that word, but click on create node and then search for for that <laughs> and then total time so let's see periodic total time I probably said it right or incorrect <laughs> so so add it and then once you add it all you have to do is set up the boundary so if we want to go down to something like 1.71 and then go back on to we can go to about we can go about 6.8 so Okay, so let's change let's change the boundary. So I'm gonna go to from 1.71, and then let me just zoom in a little bit more, and then we can do point, uh, 6.5. And the the way this is gonna work is we can attach the t value, which is the time, and we can attach it to the media the major radius. So you're gonna see that that just with that change is already animating. So I'm actually going to change this to a negative number. And see if that gives us a better a better result. Let's change this to six instead of five. That's gonna be the period. And how about a, a lower number? See what that gives us. It's much faster. So let's do four. So so that's really cool. It gives you you know an animation uh, out of the box by using the the components here. So, so that's perfect. So that now I want to focus on adding a couple of variables. So we're gonna go into what's called parameters. And in the parameters, we're gonna click on the plus symbol. Then let's find the vector three option. 
And this one I'm going to call distance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate the distance of this ve vector 3 to the vector 3 position of our sphere. So what I want to do is if I move the sphere back, I want the particles to react to that. If I move it up, I want the particles to follow that. So I want to make this system as you know, as easy to use for a designer, if we have a game designer in our, in our team, and if that person is going to do, you know, maybe it's more like a VFX artist, and you're the developer creating the system, then, you know, you can have, you give that person more functionality. So I'm going to set it, set the, the sphere back to zero, zero, zero. Let's leave it, leave it right there. And then the other thing that is cool about this system is if I want to expose this property, all I have to do is just basically click on expose. And that's going to expose the property through the through the portal. So in this case, that's the the game object that has a visual effect associated with it. And then as soon as I click on expose, you can see that the parameters are now exposed. So if I change this value, it's basically going to change the value that this is associated with in the in the graph. So I'm going to change it back to zero. Then the other property that I want to add to is going to be a flow, and that's because I want to control the size. So click on flow, and this one we're just going to call it size. And another thing that is really cool is you can also add a tooltip. So I can say, okay, this is going to be the distance. So instead of calling it distance, it's probably going to be the position of the sphere. So you can change that to however you want. Let's let's change it to position, a sphere position. So it's more, you know, it's clear. A sphere position. And this is going to be particle particle size yeah I think I think by naming them correctly it's gonna be easier for us to determine what it's doing the other thing that you can also do is you can use the tooltip as a description so we can say a sphere you know we can even say a sphere position relative to the a sphere game object perfect and then this is gonna be the particle size we can even say particle size and lead mesh output if you want to be more descriptive. And we can also expose this one as well. So as I hit expose and we go to the portal, you can see that now I have access to the particle size and I also have access to the sphere position. Awesome. So another thing that is cool is you can also add a range. So I'm not going to do the ranges just yet because we want to determine what we want to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically drag and drop the particle size and also drag and drop the, the sphere position. And you can see that it adds, it's going to add nodes for us automatically. The, the other thing that I'll do is I'm just going to basically hide this component. So we can do that by, we're just going to resize it so that it's out of the way. And I be, oh, we can just click on back blackboard to hide it or show it. Perfect. So I'm going to connect the particle size to the size option and you can kind of see that automatically I'm already it doesn't show anything because by default it was set to zero so if I go back to my backboard and we can change this to have say a default value maybe of 0.1 uh, I don't like that let's do something like something like that I think is what we had uh, it's 2.35 and, and now that we have this, we can say, okay, I want to I wanna allow it a range. And the minimum value that I'm going to allow is going to be point, I don't know, we can just allow zero. That, that's fine. And then the maximum value, let's see how we can, we can set it. So let's say that we want to set it to point, set it to one and see how that looks. You can kind of see that by doing that, I get this little slider, which is really cool. And now I can control it through a slider. So I'm going to do the, the minimum value, this is 2.2, and the maximum, I think the maximum is too high, 0.8. So now if we do something like that, I think that's perfect. Yeah, excellent. So I like that. I like those values. Then the next thing that I'll do is in the sphere position, we need to make some changes on the sphere position. And let me just change, arrange some of these so that we have more space. So I'm going to move them. Okay, perfect. So if you notice, I have I have a size, I have an angle, and I have the center. 
So if I change the center, you can kind of see that by changing the Y, it's changing the, you know, the, the center where the particles are directing to. And if I change X, you can kind of see that I can move that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the sphere position to be attached to the center. Excellent. And now I have, as you can see, I have the sphere position attached to the field transform center. So that's great, but that doesn't really give us a lot of functionality because right now, even if I move this, it doesn't really, it doesn't really apply, to be honest. So how do we fix that? The particles also look really, really bad when you, you know, where they're getting, when they're going back in, it, it looks like they're exploding. And that's because it's right now it's, 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 it's to the center, it's to the pivot. So let me show you how we can change that. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the portal and in the portal, we're going to add a new script. And this is a script that is available through the VFX. And we're going to go into a VFX parameter binder. So that's what you're going to attach. And you can see that now I have this list of parameter bindings. So if I click on the plus symbol, we can select what we want to bind to. So I definitely want to bind to the position of the object. But right now, I don't know what I'm binding to. It just has, so if I click on it, you can see that I can tell it which parameter I want to bind to. So actually what I want to bind to is the sphere position. So I'm going to say sphere, sphere position. And now I can say, okay, what do I want to bind the that to? So I want to bind it, bind it to my directional game object. And you can see that automatically found that. And now if I move the position of the directional, which is going to be my, my sphere, you can see that now the the particles are going in so it and now if i pull it out you can see it's, it creates a really cool really cool effect not only that i can i can actually move it up you can see the particles are following the sphere i can go back in and we can also move up you can see the particles actually reacting to the position of the sphere so that's that's working really really cool and I like that. I like how that works. So, so that's great. So now the particle size, you you can see that I I have a slider here. We could definitely add some UI if we wanted to and control it through the UI. But this works. I mean, the the parameter is available. It's exposed. I can change the particle size here through the inspector. I can move it down. I can move it up. And and yeah, I can I can tweak it through here. I can change the you know my directional which in this case is the sphere that we created. I can move it up, I can move it down, and I can also bring it in. And you can kind of see that that creates, that creates a cool effect. So that's really all I wanted to show you in this video, guys. If you have any questions about, you know, anything that I mentioned, any of the scripts that I went through, and also the, the parameters that you can expose, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that really allows me to create more videos like this, better videos like this, and, and you know, in turn, it allows me to grow the channel and bring you a lot more content. So thank you again, guys, and again, thank you very much.